Hi everybody, how is it going? Welcome to another series in R. In this series, we will learn more about DeepLayer package for data manipulation. DeepLayer is a very widely used and well-known package for data wrangling and manipulation purposes in data science. DeepLayer uses efficient backends, so you have to spend less time waiting for your computations to complete, even for large datasets. It provides simple functions, better known as verbs in DeepLayer language, that correspond to the most common data manipulation task to help you translate your thoughts into codes. There are five basic verbs and each of these has a function for it to perform data manipulation. The verb select is used to selecting variables on their names or their column index number in the dataset. The verb filter used for selecting cases based on their values wherever conditions applied within this verb are true. The verb mutate is used to add new variables in the dataset or subset. These new variables are functions of existing variables. For example, adding two variables in the existing dataset to create a new resultant variable in the same dataset. The verb arrange is used for reordering the data. For example, sorting the data in either descending or ascending orders. And the fifth one is the verb summarize, which as the name suggests, condensate the multiple values of a single value for example, the mean of a variable or count of a data value within a variable, etc. Do not worry about these terms for now because as we will progress in this course series, we will learn each of these and many other functions from DeepLayer package. The best part is I will use real-time cases from the data to explain not only the concepts but also the use of these verbs and other functions together from basic to advanced labels. For this tutorial, I'm going to use a hypothetical dataset which I have uploaded on my GitHub repository under the branch datasets as shown on the screen. This dataset has employees name in it and their demographic features such as their ages, genders, their education and marital status, the states as the location where they are based at, the country and their income in the last five years in dollar terms. It has some 26 cases or rows of observations in it and there are no missing values. We will copy the raw data location as shown on the screen so that we can directly import this data into R. So without much ado, let's jump on to R Studio and as you can see, I already have written some codes here on the R script editor. So first thing is to install remotes package which helps us to install the most recent committed DeepLayer package from its home repository on GitHub using the code as shown on the screen. Since I already have installed it, I'm not going to execute this code but I expect that you should do it before running any other codes as we see in the video in the next steps. Once installed the package, you have to load it into global environment using library function as shown. So let's execute it by hitting run button on our studio. Please remember that every time we are either going to execute a line or multiple lines of codes on the script editor, we either do it by hitting run button or by pressing control and enter keys together on the keyboard. Also, please keep in mind that I'm using Windows 10 operating system, but trust me on other operating systems such as Linux or Mac, the process is more or less the same. So now the package is attached within global environment. We now can use the verbs and functions from the package. But before anything else, let's read the data from GitHub location that we copied earlier. We will use read.csv native function to store the data from CSV file on GitHub into the object that we will create employee underscore data as shown on the screen. Let's paste the copied location in this function and complete the code by typing a comma and then another argument na.string equals to a concatenate function within which we first provide quotes without any space in between followed by a comma and na in quotes as shown on the screen. Although we know that there are no missing observations in the data, but still it is a good practice to use this second argument while reading data from sources such as a CSV file or a website location. This will avoid any extra efforts that we might have to put later while dealing with any values in the data. Then we select the complete code and hit run button to execute it 
which reads the data from source location given within the function and create an object in global environment that has name employees underscore data. This object is basically a data frame. When we click on this object name, it opens the data frame and we can clearly see what we expected this data to be. Although we clicked on object name to open the data frame in R, but you have to be very careful to view data frame that way. Since this is a small data set, we can open it in R, but if there were some large data set containing millions of records and thousands of variables, please do not open such data sets in R just like the way we did as this might consume huge amount of RAM on your machine leading to a system crash or hang. So to avoid this horrible condition, it is always better to view only a few rows of data set and only a few columns to get an idea about the data set and how it looks like. I will recommend to use head or tail function for that purpose. Let's close this data frame and on our script editor, we will use a magic function from dplyr package which is better known as pipe operator. I will explain about it in a while. Let me first type the data frame name on the editor and then to invoke pipe operator on the editor, just select keys on the keyboard, control, shift and M together. Alternatively, you can type also a percentage sign followed by a greater than sign followed by control sign. Now let's understand what this pipe operator does and how it is helpful in data manipulation in R. The literal meaning of pipe operator is that whatever is at the left of it, pass it to the code at the right side of it. So if I type head function after it, even in the new line below the pipe operator as shown on the screen, it is okay and pipe operator will follow that. So now the meaning of these two lines of code is that take the data from data frame employees underscore data and pass it to head function. And when we execute this code, it will return only the top six rows from the data frame and print it on the console. So let's do that. And as expected, we got the same result on the console. So this was a quick intro to pipe operator and the powers of chaining operation that can be performed in various ways for efficient and quick manipulations of data using pipe operator. We will see more examples and other complex chaining operations in our course as we progress. But before we move further, please note that we will be exploring many of the advanced techniques of data manipulations in R using dplyr and this would require us to use the capabilities within a collection of packages what is better known as tidyverse i will suggest to install the whole tidyverse package which not only contains the latest dplyr package but also contains the other useful packages thus making tidyverse a universe of packages for all the requirements of data manipulations and data engineering within data science or analytics projects what is best and most important thing here? All packages within Tidyverse share an underlying design philosophy, grammar and data structures. To install the whole Tidyverse universe of packages, just copy the code from the website tidyverse.org as shown on the screen or type the native function for installing a package from CRAN in R using R Studio script editor and within quotes type the tidyverse as package name followed by a comma and then passing another argument dependencies equals to true in capital letters as shown on the screen. Once done, select this code and hit run button to begin installation. Please make sure that you are connected to internet before executing this code. Since I already have installed the tidyverse on my system, I'll skip this step but I assume that you should do it before going into next steps in this tutorial series. But before we close this, the very first recipe of this series of data manipulation using dplyr, let's look at a couple of more simple examples. One of the features about chaining operations in tidyverse is that we can extend the chaining to many labels. For example, in our earlier case, we used single chain to print only the top rows from the data frame using head function. This was the example of single chain operation. But suppose if in that example, we wanted to take first few rows from the data frame and then we wanted to view the structure of this subset of data, we can do it in the way as shown on the screen. In this code, we first created a subset that contains only the top three rows using head function and then passed it to another native function str that would extract the structure of the data and print it on console when we execute this code. 
Of course, this isn't a very good example to show the full capabilities of Tidyverse. But nonetheless, we were able to see that if needed, we can extend the chaining to whatever steps and get the final result as what we need at different points of time during various projects. Let's check one last example in which we wanted to plot the frequency or the counts of observations for gender variable in our employees data. We could do it by sending only the gender variable to first native function table which will count the frequency of the observations in that variable for the unique factors in it and then using native function bar plot for plotting a bar type plot of the result from the previous operation in the chain. Again, let me specifically point out that this example also is not a very good example but at least we got some ideas at this time. Welcome to the new world of data manipulations using dplyr and tidyverse. Are you feeling excited to learn more? Then please subscribe to my channel, give a thumbs up to this video and share it with your friends and colleagues. Also please press the bell icon so that you don't miss any of the videos in this series of tutorials. I will see you in the next video. Thank you and happy learning.